see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Brunonia. Even if you never have before, pray with me. Who like us have trod Van Wickle's path in and out to this hallowed ground at First Baptist? Brunonians, pilgrims on this College Hill path of centuries, imbued with eternity's vision, fusion of fierce irreverence and convention and capacity with scholarship whose metric is precision and compassion. Brunonians, dancers of engagement, defiance, proposal, delight, dazzling intellect and gentle gesture. Brunonians, today Brunonians the deeply grateful, we who receive so much dare to raise a common prayer as we begin these final measures of this work. We call to mind Daniel David Sharpman, Jacob's dad, lost to us in life as is true for some of the rest of your families and parents. We are mindful of those as we gather here and we call them to heart and to witness. As of old, this beloved class of 2013, you arrive anew, bearing ever true your offerings of gratitude, learning and memory, the substance of Brown tradition, the articulation of this rising generation's motto, in God we hope. Strangers once, we clasp one another's hands dearly. The haunts of College Hill once enigmatic, now the daily labyrinth of study, research, culinary adventure, and deep friendship. At all hours, in all weather, in myriad pursuits, we trammeled Brown's paths from the Sydney Frank to the Sili and back again and again. From health services to the OMAC with new tape, we practiced ballroom steps between TF Green and Alumni Hall and we joined a shimmer, shimmering circle of tinfoil friends <laughs> on a new path, spouting Shakespeare's couplets on the green and beyond, balancing between the trees of the green, literally, assembling and dismantling the daily round of tables and posters on the main green, delighting every spring in Dave Binder on Riston. 
at stirring speakers and performance in Solomon and Sales and Granoff, pursuing and computing, writing and writing and writing, <laughs> speaking fluent Brunonian and then that dazzling dialect of transparent letters like Bright and Buds and BRCC and OIP, CIT, BDH, UFB, TWC, SWDC, GLBT, BMSC, UH, all marks of our time spent in the land of Brunonia, a, a sojourn that changed everything about the way we talk, the way we think, and even our dreams. In this reverie, we find our minds taken by the faces of two dear classmates lost to our circles. This diminishes our joy and we call to mind and say aloud the name Avi Schaefer and Sunil Tripathi. They taught us too soon of the brevity of life and the importance to teach peace and to pursue it. But always, when we name ourselves, we will name them, our fellow Brunonians, and their place in this circle and family will be ever true. Keep clear the strains of the Hutchings Vodi at midnight, the coach and the coxswain at dawn, arch sings and competitions, daily prayer and the silence of contemplative practice, above the green's distant tones of bagpipe and drums. Keep bright the rev reviving blaze of daffodils, the purple haze of the red bud buds on Wilson's path, the magnificence of our magnolias. May all that we have known here, the inches and miles of Brunonia's halls, these streets, these fields, these books, these labs, these faces, may they go with us but remain. May the vivid clarity of our present sight never dim, even as it softens. Our rejoicing this glorious commencement morning comes amid a season set in our nation to remember lives lost in the service of the nation's protection and our liberty. We honor these, each and all, praying compassion for their families, and we anchor our gratitude to attend carefully to secure the many cries for rescue that rise in our nation and the world and make of these our life work. We pledge our nation's abiding commitment to good and give thanks for all those who enact in every profession at great sacrifice commitment to this value on our behalf. We pledge anew the learning of our great university to ameliorate injury caused by conflicts, crisis, and calamity which exact too dear a price, and ask of each of us, to whom do we belong? Infuse our deeds with compassion and imagination. May we perseverate in generosity. May Earth's insults melt in the healing of discernment and the doing of good. May this rising generation of Brunonians find renown in their capacity to express gratitude to their families, their faculty, their teachers, their coaches, their benefactors, and all who make of this dear place on College Hill all that it is. In same measure as we cherish coexistence and the care of the good and wide earth, building our vocations with planks of justice and loving kindness. May their blessings and all that we've received be bound together to make of us a blessing always in the life of the world you love. This day and always, 2013s and beyond, may peace be your blessing, and may we ever true say, Amen. By the authority vested in me by the Charter of Brown University and the Board of Fellows of the Corporation, I hereby declare the 245th commencement of Brown University convened. Good morning. Welcome to this historic place on this increasingly beautiful day. These 
will be your very last academic exercises as Brown students and the commencement of your distinguished careers as alumni of the great Brown University class of 2013. It's worth asking, why do we conduct this part of our ceremony here at this Baptist meeting house, a building that formally is not even part of the Brown campus? And as with all simple questions, there are several answers. The first is that this meeting house, built in 1775, has deep historic ties to the university. As you heard yesterday, the purpose of the building was explicitly stated at the time of its construction and is noted on a plaque inside for the public worship of Almighty God and also for holding commencement in. <laughs> With a few exceptions, Brown commencements have taken place here ever since. And in its early years, the building was able to accommodate the entire student body faculty, staff, as well as interested members of the Providence, communion, who, Providence community who apparently like to come. In 1776, the first year a Brown commencement took place here, the entire student body was comprised of 40 students. Now, only part of our ceremony is held at this meeting house, and we meet outside because the quarters, as you probably noticed yesterday, have become a bit tight. But this continues to be the most important part of the ceremony because it is the point at which your degrees are actually conferred. The, the second answer to the question of why here is a little bit more complex. This building, a place of worship, evokes all that Brown University represents. At first blush, this may seem like an odd thing for me to assert. Over the years, Brown has become a decidedly secular institution that celebrates all ways of thinking and all faiths. It is anything but a small Baptist college. However, upon consideration, I think the answer does make sense. The Baptists who conceived of the idea of a great university in Rhode Island were not narrow-minded or parochial. Instead, they were informed by the ideals of tolerance and liberty that had shaped Rhode Island itself. From the start, this college was open to other denominations, and from its inception included leaders from a number of religious traditions, Baptists, Quakers, Congregationalists. An early act of the Brown Corporation was to clarify that Jewish students were also welcome here. of this college believed in the power of education to transform lives and nations, and they welcomed a diverse group to participate in this education. Furthermore, they believed quite strongly that the purpose of education was for the betterment of society itself, preparing students for lives of usefulness and reputation through the cultivation of open and independent thought. How have we changed as a university? since the time this meeting house was built. I believe that we have taken the initial ideals of our founders and built on them, making a university that is stronger and better equipped to serve the original mission. Since the time of Brown's founding, the diversity of voices to be found on College Hill has only multiplied to include students and faculty, men and women, from across America and across the world. The original idea of a college devoted to open inquiry was the root of a great university that fosters creative scholarship and rigorous learning about the world's most pressing challenges. And finally, the original aim of preparing students for lives of service is still strong. And this is where you come in. Although Brown has progressed and the world has changed, we are still beset by enormous problems. These include international and domestic security issues, problems of urban poverty and education, 
religious tensions in the United States and abroad, questions about the stability of our economic system, and very serious concerns about climate change and environmental sustainability. I have no doubt that over the course of your lives, new challenges will emerge. My best hope for each and every one of you is that you take ownership of these problems, even if they weren't of your own making, that you recognize that your education puts you in a position of responsibility to make positive contributions to the world, and that you approach these tasks with the same independence, thoughtfulness, and creativity that I have seen you exhibit each and every day over my past year at Brown. Above all, I hope you do so with the same degree of tolerance and open-mindedness that characterized the founders of this great university. I know these ideas aren't new to you. They're what attracted you to come to Brown. Since that time nearly four years ago when you marched through the Van Wickle gates, you've been engaged in an intense period of learning and discovery aimed to prepare you for lives of usefulness and reputation beyond Brown. And now that you have marched out of those gates, it's time to begin. Thank you. Soki honorandi yuvain asquos agrodum baccalaurii eiedonis keripumus vobis presentamus ed eos adhogradum. Promovere licot rogamus. My fellow has to respond. Yes. Candidoti agradum baccalaurii obscultabunt. And this is the important part. Octoritate mihi commissu vos escradum baccalaurae admitu omniaque iura ac privilegia ad hungradum pertinentia vobis concedo. In huis re testimonium diplomata vestris conglesis in collegia gramin tradum. to the left side of your mortarboard. Please remain in your place. Yeah. Please remain in your places until the platform party has exited the stage and await further instructions from the marshals and we look forward to seeing you back on College Green for the rest of the ceremony. Congratulations. <laughs>